just to supplement what the book has on solving triangles, since we didn't really get to talk about it in class. Um, our goal, we got maybe just the tiniest inkling of that by looking at those two motivating problems. Uh, but our goal is eventually to get beyond right triangles. We want to start with the right triangles, because that's the natural home of trig. And so let me just do one example and then talk a little bit of nomenclature uh, that's probably unfamiliar that's gonna, that shows up in the one word problem I assigned. So to solve a right triangle means to basically find out all the information about it, all the angles and all the sides. And if I don't give you some of that information to start with, it's hopeless. So how much do I need to give? Well, I need to tell you one of the angles besides the right angle, because otherwise, if that changes, that obviously changes the shape of the triangle. And then I need to give you at least one bit of side information, one bit of length information, because you don't know if this is like 100 miles or two millimeters. Could be anything. So let's say for this problem, I give you one of the side that's opposite the 50 degrees. And you could be given either of these angles and any one of the three sides, and we'd be able to do a similar process. And you can see a lot of examples in the book. But let's see. Let's call this x and this z and see if we can solve for x and z, and this other angle we want to solve for as well. Well, this is easy, because the two angles in a right triangle have to add up to 90, because the whole thing has to add up to 180. So this is going to be 40 degrees. So in general, that's easy to get. OK, so now let's think about x. And what we want to do, do is go back to our, trig, our triangle trig understanding of trig ratios. Okay. So um, this is going back to that basic stuff about opposite over adjacent, things like that. So well, we always want to compare the, the unknown with the known. If we write a ratio involving x and z, it's not going to be super helpful. But if we write a ratio involving x and 12, it's good. So we could either write 12 over x is, let's see, that's tan, because it's opposite over adjacent, of 50, focusing on this angle. Or we could write x over 12, that's cotangent of 50, which makes sense, because these are reciprocals of each other, and these are reciprocals of each other. We could even write x over 12, we could focus on this angle. That's the opposite. x is the opposite to 40. And 12, it's, just, it's adjacent. So that's tan of 40. Oh, that's interesting. Cotangent of an angle is the tangent of the complementary angle. That's a cofunction fact, a cofunction identity. OK. So anyway, you do it, it's good. This is probably the easiest, actually. Tan actually has a button on the calculator. And I don't have to do any weird algebra. I just have to move the, the uh, so I'm not saying you have to do all, write all three of these down. Any one of them would work. Cotangent isn't such a great thing to deal with because then it's not a button on the calculator. So tangent's a little preferable. OK. So 12, tan, 40 degrees. Oh my god, I've got, you've got to be in degree mode. And OK, I just checked that I'm in degree mode. You've got to check. And I just take 12, tan, 40. And it's 10 point oh seven. Then z, well, I could compare it to x now, since that's known. But I, I, 12 is a prettier number. It's a little easier to write down. So I'm going to compare it to 12. So let's see, z over 12, that'd be nice. But oh, a hypotenuse over opposite, that's 1 over the sine. That's cosecant of 50. Now I'm thinking of this as the angle here. So this is the opposite. And this is the hypotenuse. I could use 40, and this would be the adjacent. Okay? So that's one of the many ways to do it. And eh, cosecant, eh, I don't like that. 12 over z, though, that's sine of 50. So I'm focusing on this angle, and that was my choice. You don't have to, but we know it, so we can focus on it. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, 12 over z. OK, so now we've got, um, we just multiply, and so we get z. And then we divide by the sine 50. 12 over sine 50. Now notice, I've got a sine in the denominator. So secretly, I really am taking a cosecant. So it would have worked here as well. But one way or another, with the calculator not having a cosecant button, we're going to have to take 1 over sine. So 12 divided by sine 50, 15.67. So that's 15.67. Now there's another way to get that third side. Think about it for a second. If you know this side of a right triangle, you know this side of a right triangle. 
Yes, that's right. Pythagoras would also get that to us. So we could, we could have gotten that as the square root of 12 squared plus 10.07 squared. And that would have given us that as well. So don't forget Pythagoras. It's still a most basic and fundamental fact about right triangles. So uh, you always want to do a reality check, especially if, you're, if you had your mode wrong. If this was 40 radians that I had used on the calculator, I probably would have gotten something completely ridiculous. Okay, this is a fairly accurately drawn picture. This should be smaller than 12, but not ridiculously smaller. In fact, it really is not that great a picture. It shouldn't be this much smaller than the picture. Um, and it should be positive. And then this should be bigger than both of these guys, but not ridiculously much bigger. And so the numbers work out there. If you got like minus 2.7, Probably because you were in radians instead of degrees. Okay. One more quick thing. Uh, so that's you know just an example of solving a right triangle. Sorry, going back to our basic understanding. Really, pretty much review, depending on how much you did with it in uh, in, in algebra two geometry. Um, there's a terminology in a word problem. The, the one word problem I signed in the homework. It's that we have this building, because the Empire State Building. Okay. And it says the angle of elevation, somebody's off at a fixed distance from it. It says the angle of elevation from this person looking at the top is a certain amount. Well, that just means if I'm looking at something and it is above the horizontal to me, that angle is called the angle of elevation. It's always measured compared to the horizontal. There's going to be some times when you're going to be tempted to draw like this angle that compares to vertical. That's not an angle of elevation. The corresponding thing, if it's below, if, is if I'm in a plane, say, there's my plane, and here's the horizontal, and I'm looking down on the ground at something on the ground. This guy is called the angle of depression, which I always think sounds like pretty good like emo band or something. Um, that guy with the angle of depression always, always, always measured to the horizontal. Both of these guys are measured compared to the horizontal. So if it's straight horizontal, angle of elevation is zero, angle of depression is zero. It's not this angle here. Those are complementary. It is this angle here. The angle of elevation of this guy looking at the plane is a parallel angle to this guy. So that's the same as the angle of depression of the plane looking down. But be careful, don't measure these guys from the vertical. Okay, that's it.